Hi everyone, welcome back. Following on from our deep dive into dopamine, today we are taking a look at another really fascinating chemical in your brain and your body, serotonin. You might have heard of this one, it's often referred to as the feel-good chemical, but it does a few different things for you, as well as getting your mood and your outlook right for the day. It also has a big impact on your digestion and your sleep. And if you don't have enough of this one, you can feel a little bit irritable or anxious. So if you'd like to fine tune your serotonin and learn a little bit more about this amazing chemical, then stay tuned. Let's get into it. So serotonin is a really important neuromodulator in your brain and your body. In fact, most of your serotonin is produced in your gut, about 90%. So your gut levels of serotonin are actually really important for your baseline amount. So the amount that you will generally have when you wake up in the morning and as you go through the day. And then as different things happen throughout the day, maybe someone says something nice and you're feeling really appreciated, you'll get a little peak of serotonin that is released in the brain. But if you're wanting to optimize the way that your serotonin is working, it's important that you consider your gut health because of course most of the serotonin is there. And before we get into any of these strategies, it's important to note that many antidepressant medications, the mechanism of action they work by is to boost serotonin levels. And it's really important not to make any changes to those without consulting your doctor. So there continues to be a lot of exciting research in this area and we continue to learn how important the little bacteria that live in our gut is to our gut health and how important that is for our brain health and our levels of important neuromodulators like serotonin and like dopamine and others. So to get those baseline levels of serotonin right, you really need to create an environment that supports those gut bacteria in thriving. So when we talk about gut health, a key is the trillions of bacteria that are living inside there. And it turns out they play a really important role in modulating the production and some of them even being turned directly into neuromodulators like your serotonin. So it comes as no surprise that the research is starting to show that differences in the diversity of bacteria that each of us has there and the presence of particular strains of bacteria, they're learning more about which particular species are so important. Some of the species are particularly important in creating your serotonin. So focusing on foods and environmental and lifestyle choices that are going to create a great environment in your digestive tract is a real key to keeping those baseline levels of serotonin really healthy. And the little bacteria in your gut, they feed on prebiotic fiber. So that's one strategy if you're trying to boost the health of the population in there. But the research is really showing that incorporating several small serves of fermented foods is actually one of the most powerful ways that you can boost the health of your gut bacteria and support your gut in producing serotonin and digesting your food. So things like sauerkraut, kimchi are really great. You might want to get into some kefir or no added sugar yogurt. You can even make these things at home. And if you're just starting out with these foods, it's important to slowly, gradually work your way up to these because if you've had a certain mix of bacteria in your gut and you've been eating a lot of refined processed food, and then all of a sudden you make dramatic changes and start really upping your intake of these things, you can experience a bit of gastro distress. So working your way up, you know, maybe just a tablespoon or so of these fermented foods with each meal throughout the day is a really good step in the right direction for your gut health and your serotonin production. Another really important consideration to your baseline serotonin levels is how much stress and inflammation is in the body. Because of course, stress is really really detrimental to many things in the body, but especially to the gut health. Things like your stomach acid are going to be reduced if you're under a lot of stress. And in that situation, of course, the acidity in the stomach is a key player in dictating which bacteria grow because they all have different pH or acidity levels that they tend to thrive at. And sometimes if you don't have enough stomach acid, that can create an environment where undesirable bacteria can grow. So focusing on your stress management, focusing on your sleep is really important as well, will have a big difference there. And then in terms of inflammation, of course, that can come from many sources, but one of the key contributors is the foods that you eat. So for many Many people, things like dairy and gluten containing grains can be a problem and create a inflammatory response in the body. And also those refined carbohydrates, those refined flours and sugars can really be harmful as well. So those foods can create an 
inflammatory process in the body and they can make the wall of the digestive tract a little bit leaky and you might have heard of the term leaky gut and it turns out that your gut is always communicating to your brain and your brain is always communicating to your gut and if you are eating foods that are inflaming that gut wall lining and creating little holes in it then undigested food particles that shouldn't be getting into the bloodstream can actually leak out through those holes in the gut wall and travel up to the brain and that can create an inflammatory process in the brain where there's little immune cells in your brain, microglia cells, and their role is to clean up different debris from different chemical processes in the brain. And if the inflammation from the gut begins to be communicated to the brain and switches these cells on that can create an inflammatory process in the brain and you know so many different diseases including brain related ones like depression as well as heart disease cancer diabetes and arthritis are all linked to chronic inflammation levels so whatever you can do throughout the day and through the foods that you eat to control that inflammation is going to have a really positive impact on your gut health and of course that directly affects the brain so some great anti-inflammatory foods to include will be things like your brightly colored vegetables and fruits making sure you're getting enough omega-3 fatty acids so things like wild-caught fish or talking to somebody about supplementing if you don't eat so much fish or even incorporating things like green tea and turmeric can be really helpful to provide a great level of antioxidants and an anti-inflammatory component as well Another thing that can be really helpful for your serotonin levels and your overall sense of well-being is making sure you're getting enough natural sunlight, especially in the morning. If you can get sunlight in your eyes within an hour or so of waking, that can have a really significant impact in clicking your brain and your body into action because the nerve cells on your retina of your eye, which is actually part of the central nervous system along with your brain and your spinal cord, when they detect light, it actually initiates a cascade of really important processes in the brain and different cycles in the body. And one of the most important one of those is of course the light and dark cycle. So in terms of your neuromodulators, you'll generally have higher levels of dopamine and noradrenaline earlier in the day. And then the serotonin levels will tend to increase naturally more in the second half of your day. And this natural process and cycling of these neuromodulators is really helped if you get that natural sunlight, especially in the morning or as early as you can. And it turns out in the body that serotonin is actually converted into melatonin, which of course is a really key player in that light dark cycling in the body as well. So in the morning, if you get that light into your eyes, that naturally inhibits melatonin and then towards the end of your day and as the sun drops and your eyes detect darkness and that lack of light you'll naturally get more melatonin produced so you can kind of start to see how important it is that you get more light in the morning and you really focus on turning those lights down at night time especially before you're wanting to go to sleep because that's going to again be a really simple way to maximize the natural level and cycling of both serotonin and melatonin and you can see how everything works together so so far we've talked about some things that will have a big impact on maximizing your your baseline levels of serotonin but of course you still have a process in the brain that is responsible for releasing more serotonin and giving you those peaks throughout the day and one of the things that evokes that release of serotonin and that peak in the brain is moving your body so taking a walk getting outside in nature and also physical touch so hugging a friend or a loved one or a pet can be very healthy. Massage, acupuncture have been shown to be helpful too. And if you can't fit in a massage, then something like a dry scrubbing brush can be a really helpful way to do yourself. And it feels great. Just a couple of minutes before you jump in the shower can be a great strategy for brushing away any negative energy and giving your body and your brain a little boost. And of course, exercise, you get the double whammy. You get also get some of those endorphins, which will really complement the effects of the serotonin. And finally, if you're wanting to boost your serotonin, it can be really helpful to remember how your brain works. Your brain organizes itself through experience and the processes that you can consciously put it through that 
create positive chemicals in the brain and the body are the ones that it's going to remember next time and when you wake up in the morning. So the more that you can create positive brain chemicals, the more that your brain will remember to work that way and you won't have to work as hard if you're feeling low to get yourself out of that cycle. So one of the emotions that is positively associated with good levels of serotonin is gratitude. So the more gratitude that we can bring into our life, the more positive, happy brain chemicals we can experience. Because you can't always change your destination overnight, but you can change your brain chemistry. And that has a huge impact on the way that you feel and your outlook on life. So I really hope that these ideas help today. And you can think of some things that you can do today that are going to really boost your brain chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend or family member and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.